Hi folks, welcome to Behind the Numbers Around the World, an e-marketer podcast brought to you by Newstar. It's Tuesday, October the 26th, and I'm your host, UK Principal Analyst Bill Fisher, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to Around the World with the impact of Facebook's outages. Welcome everyone to a Behind the Numbers show that takes you around the world looking at what various countries are doing in the worlds of commerce, media and advertising. Every month we take a topic and I ask a couple of our international experts to fill us in on what's happening in their markets. Today we'll be looking at how Facebook's recent outages affected markets around the world. In particular, we'll be asking just how difficult would life be without WhatsApp in India? I was thinking that WhatsApp being down in India would really be comparable to, you know, text messaging, phone calls, emails, customer service chats, and Venmo all going down at the same time and for six hours. And in Latin America, is consumer reliance on Facebook and its various platforms a major problem? I think with anything, when you rely too much on one company's ecosystem, that these types of unfortunate situations are inevitable. But I think that it also underscores the importance to diversify. In the first half of today's show, I'll be joined by our global media expert, Jasmine Emberg, who will fill us in on some of the impacts the outages had on Indian consumers and businesses. Then in the second half of the show, I'm going to be joined by our Latin America expert, Mateo Savells, who will give us the lowdown on what the outages meant in that region. But first, let's say hi to our senior analyst for global trends and a social media expert to boot, Jasmine Emberg. Hello, Jasmine. Hey, Bill. Hey, everyone. Lovely to have you on the show. Uh, now, you're currently in Finland, but I believe you're in New York when the outages happened. Is that right? I was. That is right. Did they have any impact on you at all? They did. I am a big WhatsApp user, especially when I'm traveling around. And I was super frustrated that I wasn't able to get in contact with my family and friends over here in Finland. Definitely be talking about that in more detail. But we before will. we get deep into that, let's share a Britishism, shall we? Now, in the prep for this call, you challenged me because you said that you were an advantage because you'd lived in the UK. So I'm going to test you with this one. Um, oh, no, I shouldn't have you? said anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. You might win. I don't know. Are you familiar with the term flummoxed? F-L-U-M-M-O-X-E-D. I'll say it again because I love this word. Flummoxed. Yes, I think. Go on. Um, let me try to think of a good word to explain it, but sort of shocked, surprised, flabbergasted. Close enough. I, yes. You win. You win. Yes. yes. It, yeah. <laughs> well done. Yes. It actually means confused. So if you're confused okay. by something, you can be flummoxed. History of this word is a little difficult to ascertain. Uh, first appeared in print in the 19th century, but had likely been around for much longer than that in various dialects of spoken English spanning from the Midlands to the northern counties like Lancashire and Yorkshire. I myself am a Lancastrian, and this is a word that I heard a lot when I was growing up. And when Facebook went down, and before I knew it was down, I was really flummoxed as to why I'd stopped getting WhatsApp messages, because like you, I rely on it quite a lot. So there we go, flummoxed. Let's get into our discussion about these outages, shall we? It all happened right at the beginning of the month, on Monday the 4th of October. Services were down for about six hours, just shy of six hours. That was across Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp. The company blamed an internal technical issue, which also, interestingly enough, locked Facebook's workers out of their offices, meeting rooms and email accounts. Anyway, Jasmine, we're going to talk about India first. So why don't you just give me the, the lowdown on what happened in India when this outage occurred? Sure. So in India, it happened around 8 or 9 p.m. in the evening. And I think that that may have sort of mitigated some of the potential impact uh, that it could have had, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't felt. And I think when we're talking about India, we should kind of take a little bit of a step back and, and separate Facebook's three major services as being Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. So India is one of Facebook's largest markets. Uh, for a lot of those users, it's not just about social networking. It's also the primary way and sometimes the only way that they're able to get online. Even so, because the outage happened so late at night, I would still say that was more of a inconvenience, maybe a major inconvenience that they weren't able to either look at their own news feeds or go onto a certain website. Instagram, 
India is also a huge market for Instagram, but it's primarily used for entertainment and even more so now with TikTok continuing to be banned in the country. And I would say that users were really frustrated about not being able to scroll through stories or, or watch reels. But again, I chalk that up to inconvenience more than anything else. But then there's WhatsApp. And WhatsApp is really the primary way in which a lot of people in India text and even call each other. It's also, in many cases, the primary way they communicate with businesses. So that app being down was way more than an inconvenience there. It literally brought a lot of people's digital lives to a complete standstill. Let's dig in a little bit about how WhatsApp is used in India, because, uh, and certainly for our US listeners who probably think WhatsApp's down, so what? But in India, obviously, it was a massive issue. In the UK, it was quite annoying, as I mentioned, for me, because it's it's one of the key ways that I use to be part of messaging groups, whereas in the US, with the prevalence of the iPhone and iMessage, WhatsApp's more of an afterthought. So just explain in a bit more detail how WhatsApp's used it in India. Sure. So first and foremost, I mean, WhatsApp is a consumer to consumer messaging app. People send texts, they can send multimedia messages, they can call and, and video chat over the mobile web or Wi-Fi connection. But it's also a really major business tool in India. And WhatsApp has two options for businesses. It's either the free WhatsApp business app that's similar to the consumer-facing app but has a couple of extra features, including things like automated messaging, product catalogs to showcase products from brands, and shopping carts where people can actually place orders. And then there's the WhatsApp business API, which is really meant for larger businesses. And the major difference that I would say between that and the free version is that it also lets businesses send promotional and marketing messages to people for a fee. In India, WhatsApp also has a payment service called WhatsApp Pay, through which people can send money directly from their bank accounts. So WhatsApp is really used in many different ways outside of just regular messaging in India. So let's stick with this business aspect. Sure. I mean, what what would, I mean, you mentioned that this happened at 8 p.m. in the evening in India, which was quite fortuitous. What would happen if WhatsApp suddenly stopped working at the start of a business day and it was down all week? I mean, how badly would businesses be impacted by this? Well, I'll start off with a data point from WhatsApp, and it said in July of 2020 that it had over 50 million users of its business app worldwide, and over 15 million of those were in India. So that just starts to show you how widespread this business app usage really is in India. I read quite a few articles about small business owners in particular who were impacted in India, and even though it was so late, it it was the time that they were either confirming orders or sending out delivery people to deliver orders. And all of that happened through WhatsApp and they weren't able to, you know, complete those transactions. What's really interesting about India too is that its retail economy is really powered by mom and pop shops, which are called Kiranas and other small businesses. And a lot of those are solely dependent on social media and messaging to reach their customers digitally. And WhatsApp in particular tends to be the number one point of contact between many businesses and their customers. It's really interesting because, you know, WhatsApp being down was an annoyance for me, but it's not like my livelihood depending on it. It it sounds like in in India, this is this would be a really huge deal as opposed to just a slight annoyance. Yeah, I was trying to compare it to what it would mean for me in my own life. And I was thinking that WhatsApp being down in India would really be comparable to, you know, text messaging, phone calls, emails, customer service chats and Venmo all going down at the same time. And for six hours. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, that puts it into perspective, doesn't it? Okay, so WhatsApp was down. In the UK, there was a a small spike in people joining competitor apps like Signal, Telegram. Did that happen in India? Are, Are there other competitors in India that were able to take some of the slack? Or is WhatsApp just all encompassing over there? So, I mean, there are other messaging apps in India. So WhatsApp does have competitors, but there really is no immediate alternative. As we've already talked about, it's so integrated into people's personal business and financial lives. There's some local apps called GeoChat and Hike Messenger. Telegram is also quite popular there. I wasn't able to find any um, specific information on India alone, but Telegram was a really big beneficiary of the WhatsApp outage overall. It said that it gained 70 million users worldwide from the outage. And for context, it says that it has 1 billion worldwide downloads currently and 500 million active users. So that's a pretty big gain. Wow. Yeah. So obviously, 
Facebook was down, but the conversation in India has got to be around WhatsApp. So I'm guessing if I asked you to give me a wrap up as to what <laughs> the, the out Facebook outages meant for India, if you could just wrap up in a couple of sentences, what's your biggest takeaway from this um, this big outage that, that happened? The big takeaway in India is that it wasn't really a Facebook story. It was a WhatsApp story. And there's really no comparable service that I could think to in the U.S., that would have as much of an impact on people's personal business and, and financial lives as WhatsApp did on Indian users. Great. Well, Jasmine, thank you very much. It was great to chat. It'd be great to go even deeper on this, but it is time to hear from our sponsor. And then when I return, I'll be talking to Matteo about what the outage is meant for Latin America. We'll be right back. Are you prepared for marketing's next chapter? You won't want to miss Brave New Worlds 2021, the virtual marketing and analytics event of the year on November 9th and 10th. Join Brave New Worlds to learn how you can adapt to the forces redefining advertising. It's free and you'll hear from today's top minds in marketing data and analytics, including executives from Facebook, General Motors, Capgemini, Publicis and more. Go to bravenewworlds.ustar to register today. Welcome back, and also welcome to our senior analyst for Latin America and Spain, Mateo Savels. Hi, Mateo. Hey, Bill. Great to be here. Like Jasmine, I think you were in New York or its environs, at least when the outage occurred. Did it impact you in any way? Yes, it did. Uh, similar to Jasmine, I also use WhatsApp to communicate with friends abroad in Europe, mainly in Spain and in the rest of Latin America. And, you know, with working from home these past 18 months or so, it, I just assumed it was my internet connection going down and resetting the router, assuming that my Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp were all something to do with our lovely Wi-Fi connection here. But then I turned out, you know, I started seeing the news feed and I'm like, oh, OK, Facebook is down. It's not it's not my internet. So, yes, definitely an impact. <laughs> OK, so impact in New York. But we're going to be talking about Latin America a mm -hmm. pretty broad regional amalgam but could you perhaps like jasmine did for india just give us a very broad overview of how some countries in the region were impacted by the outages absolutely i mean latin america is a huge continent lots of countries so obviously the impact was f really tremendous throughout the region i'll just highlight a couple notable takeaways or notable impacts that i came across in covering and reading the news in brazil in particular whatsapp is definitely one of the most popular applications in the country and it's used by people of all ages socioeconomic classes so when the outage hit it really impacted the country's informal workers and that whole informal economy people couldn't get in touch with clients people couldn't sell their goods in Mexico as well, the country uses WhatsApp primarily and as well as other Facebook properties to advertise and sell their goods and services. And there was a report put out by NetBlock's platform that estimated that Mexico lost about $14 million worth of revenue because of the Facebook-related outages that day. And then also, too, in Colombia, the country was preparing for a series of online activation events. And these activation events are to really help revitalize the economy. So the Colombian Chamber of E-Commerce was putting forth their annual Cyber Monday event. And with the platforms down, businesses couldn't communicate with consumers, businesses couldn't communicate promotions effectively, and it really put a hindrance on the ability to communicate effectively the deals, the promotions, and even you know that post-sales experience where businesses would use WhatsApp to communicate with consumers and their orders. But from a consumer point of view, mm -hmm. is Facebook and its properties often, do they often act as a, as a web gateway for many people in Latin America? Absolutely. And in, yes, I would say they are really the gateway to the whole digital ecosystem. It's really the first point of departure for many first time Internet users in Latin America. And even looking at our own social media numbers, I mean, you could I would be very confident in saying that social media Internet usage is really becoming synonymous with social media usage or, or the reverse social media usage is becoming really synonymous with Internet usage across the region. So it's definitely a dominant platform and, and gateway. So Facebook being down was a major issue. Yes. I, I mean, is Facebook too big? I guess is the question I'm getting towards in Latin America. It's definitely, it's very present. I will say that it is very big. And I think with anything, when you rely too much on one company's ecosystem, that these types of unfortunate situations are inevitable. 
But I think that it also underscores the importance, especially from a business standpoint, of why it's also important to diversify the types of channels you are, be it on advertising, be it on communications, be it for sales. I know for a lot of small businesses, I mean, we do have there are the major, you know, major retailers, major e-commerce players within the region. But a large part of the regional economy is comprised of small business owners and the informal workers as well. So it just underscores the importance of, you know, don't put all your eggs and say, have all your customer service operations on just on WhatsApp, maybe think through what it means to have an operation on Twitter or via email. And how do you have the proper resources to handle that as well all across those different channels? Yep, great point. But we are talking about Facebook properties, yes. and let's talk about one of those in particular. As per India, WhatsApp is is a particularly big deal in Latin America as well as in India. Why don't you just outline for us quite how big of a deal WhatsApp is in the region? Absolutely. So I'll just put some market sizing numbers into perspective, just so the our, our listeners can really understand just how big of a market Latin America is. So Brazil is the second largest WhatsApp market per hour forecasting estimates, about, about 120 million users. This will use it by the end of this year. And Mexico is the world's sixth largest WhatsApp market with about 60 million users. So in either case, you're talking about more than three, about around three quarters of the internet user population or more than half of both countries' populations using this messaging platform. So just thinking about how big these countries are in general, it's yeah, I think it really highlights just how prevalent it is in the region. Yeah, so lots of consumers using uh, using this mm-hmm. platform, but you've already touched on the fact that a lot of businesses in, in Latin America use WhatsApp as well. How important is it as a business tool in Latin America? Absolutely. It's growing, and I think with the rise in social commerce that we've seen over the past 18 months, it's really becoming a fixture of businesses and the way businesses conduct online operations in the region. We are seeing it mainly used for that post, a lot of the times for that post purchase, customer service, questions about orders. Uh, We're also seeing it used in Brazil, for instance, the uh, WhatsApp Pay is also available, similar to India. So there is that payment component with it. And I think another interesting fact, you know, thinking about this with, you know, that we don't really think of too often with the rise of telehealth as well. You have a lot of physicians also using WhatsApp to communicate and talk to their patients. So think about it. If you've had an important test or exam and you're waiting to hear from your doctor and you cannot reach your doctor or your doctor cannot reach you to communicate those results, that's very problematic. So it, it really affected, you know, not just retail, not just small businesses, but even healthcare and even other professions that you wouldn't normally think that you weren't normally think about top of mind right away. Well, wow. right. So the, again, this is like Facebook or WhatsApp being almost too big to fail. We spoke with Jasmine about some of the local competition to WhatsApp mm-hmm. in India and the fact that WhatsApp's kind of the 800 pound gorilla over there. Is the situation the same in Latin America? It sounds like it is. Yeah. I mean, WhatsApp is still the dominant platform. And I think there was an interesting quote from uh, Telegram CEO that said, that the surge was about, they received a surge of about 70 million WhatsApp refugees. And this was globally, not just Latin America. But I thought the, the phrasing of that was quite, it was an interesting way of phrasing that. But, you know, we did see headlines and we have seen data showing that consumers did, there was an uptick in Telegram downloads and usage. But even looking at things overall in aggregate, WhatsApp is just so big compared to the Telegram base or compared to any other competitor base. You know, just looking at some data, for instance, from Reuters, the Institute of Journalism, you know, for instance, at the regional level, WhatsApp was used by 83% of Internet users in the region. And then nearly half, about the over 40% had used Facebook Messenger. And just really one in five, fewer than one in five respondents use Telegram. So you're talking about over 80% versus about 17 percent so that gap just really highlights that yes although you might get a lot of headline hype when unfortunate events like these happen it's just overall the big picture is it's just whatsapp there is no real alternative to all the functionalities of whatsapp and its presence in the region similar to what's happening in india as well there's just real no other alternative and it's just such an entrenched part of the digital culture of the region and for better for worse it's here to stay yeah, it's, it's interesting because I, I wonder if it's the business aspect of WhatsApp that is causing this chasm. So as I mentioned in, in the first mm-hmm. segment with Jasmine, in the UK, WhatsApp being down was was a big issue, mm-hmm. but it's not used in the same way over here for business to business stuff. So mm-hmm. when you have an outage like this and there are the news pieces about Telegram and Signal seeing spikes mm-hmm. 
you know, it gets closer to WhatsApp usage because the WhatsApp mm-hmm. usage isn't as high in the UK. So that's that's really interesting. And I think just one other point too. I think in developing markets too, I, I'm not too familiar with the Indian market, but I would say overall in developing markets, WhatsApp is also a really important tool because you do have the audio message or the voice feature to send voice notes. So that's something as well that, you know, a lot of people are very accustomed to sending voice notes as well. And it's kind of that replacement of the phone plan in general. So where you have these abilities to say bridge the digital barrier by being able to use voice and to be able to send and communicate effectively via that medium, it's also an important aspect of the way in which people communicate in the region and I'd say throughout the developing world too. Using a phone for voice. Yes. How about that? Who'd have thought? <laughs> Um, okay, Matteo, one or two sentences, just wrap up for me. What did the Facebook outage mean for Latin America? My personal take on this is that the Facebook outage was really a stark reminder of what happens when we as consumers, we as businesses, we as a society put all of our digital eggs into one basket. And to me, it's just a reminder that we shouldn't be so heavily dependent on one single company's ecosystem. We need to make sure that, you know, we as consumers are able to function or we as businesses are able to function in the event that an outage occurs and that society just doesn't come to a screeching halt. So to me, that's the major takeaway and learning and and also the opportunity. It's also how can we now diversify ourselves? You know, maybe we'll maybe we'll go back to actually calling people on the regular phone instead of sending endless notes. Or maybe we'll, <laughs> you know, try another platform to diversify our business portfolios rather than relying on one sole platform. So that to me is the biggest takeaway for that, I would say. Telephone calls. No, <laughs> won't happen. <laughs> Matteo, thank you very much. That was great. Okay, that's all we have time for today on Behind the Numbers Around the World, brought to you by Newstar. Thanks to my guests, Jasmine and Matteo, and thanks to all of you for listening. If you were flummoxed by anything we discussed today, you can, of course, email us at podcast at emarketer.com. Tune in tomorrow for the Behind the Numbers Brand Anatomy, where every two weeks our Jeremy Goldman speaks to a different brand to find out what's keeping them up at night and what they learned from a recent campaign of theirs. Tomorrow, for episode three, Jeremy speaks to Ryan Alovis, CEO of DTC vision care company Lens Direct. I'll see you next month for another episode of Behind the Numbers Around the World, an eMarketer podcast made possible by Newstar.